Hi, this is Irene, and you're listening to LIC MC Radio. You're invited to tune in to Open Mic with Bishop Andre Sunny Woods. That's Thursdays at 10 p.m. Thursdays at 10 p.m. right here on LIC MC Radio. Standard Time, 
the interdenominational assembly of churches usa facebook page we will be live so join us in the conversation uh you don't want to miss this special shared time as we gather uh, to share the word of god it's going to be a blessing a blessing a blessing and uh, you'll get to hear uh, these great men and women of god and uh, the giftings and the anointing in the body of christ thank you uh and listen i want you to come in on saturday you'll be able to like and share and uh comment and and join up the conversation all the way through so uh, uh please fam please sir uh, uh join us because we're, go we're going to be highlighting the word of god uh and uh you don't want to miss this time as we'll be sharing uh in the word of god now those of you that normally join us listen come on come on in the room uh, like and share send your thumbs up and uh your hearts we appreciate you uh we know it's a late hour for some some perhaps going to bed already and have got to go to work tomorrow and those of you that are still up uh, get on your device and uh share this with your your friends and tag them and let them know we are here and we're going to be sharing in the word of god real shortly uh i'm excited because of all of the wonderful things that god has allowed us uh, to experience and to be blessed by in this day and time and certainly the lord has been so kind to us uh until we just can't tell it all you know we don't sing them old songs or god has been so good to me i cannot tell it all uh and so uh, that's the way i feel tonight god has been so good to me uh if i had ten thousand talks my god i couldn't praise him enough because he's just been just that good uh unto this brother here when i tell you god's been good he's been good uh and you just don't know song say you don't know like i know what the lord has done for me oh and certainly i'm sure all of you may have your own personal testimony tonight of what god has done and what god is doing in your life as she's blessed you uh just today let's just think about the blessing in today uh what a joy it's been today uh we just thank god for his many many blessings today and how he's blessed us and how he's made a way today there's a song that's been put out years ago i love this song every day is a day of thanksgiving he keeps on blessing me he's just good to me opening up doors that i can't see he's blessing me uh take the time to glorify the lord uh and that's what we we should always do take the time to glorify god and praise him and thank him for his many 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 blessings that he has afforded you and i over the over this week and again i'm back to just the day i'm telling you god has been faithful and there's none like him you better hear what i'm saying today so listen don't forget to join us on saturday and then on friday night tomorrow night uh on uh, spotlight on music on the fellowship of music and arts uh facebook live we will be interviewing Marla Larkin on tomorrow night. She's one of the directors of the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church here in the city of Detroit, uh, pastored by Dr. Tillis Chapman. And we worked together for some years when I was minister of music there. Great, awesome soloist and singer. She's also a board member of uh, the National Gospel Choirs and Courses and uh, shared as chair of the soloist division for some years she will be with us at 9 p.m eastern standard time tomorrow night don't miss that interview 
look on Andre Sonny Wood's page or Fellow Super Music Lodge page, you'll be able to see uh, the flyer there and get all the information you need to participate and join us. It's going to be a blessed time as we conversate with her and share with her on how God is blessed and what God is doing in her ministry uh, at this present time. All right, and then Sunday, 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 Sunday. We're going to be blessed with an awesome interview. One of my great friends from Buffalo, New York, or Rochester, New York, uh, Dr. Julius Dix, great minister, music musician, uh, songwriter, producer. He's going to be my guest. We're going to be highlighting him as he tells his story on This Is My Story. Don't miss that interview, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Bishop Andre S. Wood's Facebook page, Fellowship of Music and Arts Facebook page, and then, you know, later, you can uh, get me to see it on our YouTube channels. I'm excited about what God is doing, and uh, we certainly want to include you and invite you to be a part. Again, uh, hit our notifications if you want to uh, be uh, notified when we go live. Hit the notification bell on this page, and uh, you'll be notified on our Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA page, on my regular public page, Andre Sunday Wood. Hit those notifications that you can join us and be a part of all of the ministry times and sharing times. Now, I've got some calls, uh, uh, inboxes and calls from the interview on Sunday with Bishop Freddie Washington. You can go to uh, uh, the Fellowship of Music and Arts page and go to Bishop Andre S. Wood's page, this page, and then certainly you'll be able to see and hear and view the, the awesome uh, interview we did with Bishop uh, Freddie Washington out of Pennsylvania. Great, great man of God, artist, soloist, and singer, and uh, producer, songwriter, musician, I mean, just excellent. Uh, an anointed minstrel of the word uh, of the word in song so uh, go there and check that interview out and you'll be blessed blessings to you brother Jesse Ricks for joining us tonight appreciate you coming in tag some friends and some of our uh, fellow worshipers and those who share with us from time to time and uh, listen it's been it's been I mean a, a, a phenomenal week and let me, let me take this moment to say to uh, uh, my, my dear sister, Sister Kelly Minor and Kimberly, blessings to you today. Uh, those of you that saw the post, we lost another soldier. Uh, Professor Kenneth Minor went home to be with the Lord a few days ago, and uh, all of his arrangements are posted on our page. Go to my page, Andre Sunny Woods Fellowship Music Arts, and you can get the arrangements. James H. Cole Home Funerals are in charge here in the city of Detroit, the Northwest Chapel. And on Sunday, they'll be having a visitation. Uh, it's from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., but the family will be there on Sunday between 6 p.m. and uh, uh, 8 p.m., I believe it is, 6 p.m., a couple hours, 8 p.m., the family will be there. And those of you that can't make the service on on next Monday, which is the 13th, uh, the service is going to be held at the New Providence Baptist Church, the city of Detroit, Dr. Everett Jennings, the pastor. And that service, I believe, is going to be at 9 a.m. Uh, in the morning at New Providence. So uh, we, are, we are praying and our sympathy and condolences out to the family uh, and we're really praying because it's just just a few days ago uh, their mother went home to be with the Lord they just buried their mother uh, just two or three months ago and now their father so uh, we're lifting you up Kelly and Kimberly in prayer and the entire family blessings to you and you know that, that we love you uh, and to all of you that are experienced again we pray and continue for Bishop Gregory M. Foster, with the loss of his mother, uh, homecoming was last Saturday. And so we're, we're praising God for how God is just the keeper 
and he's blessing his people, seeing you, seeing them through, and they are, they are making it through uh, this time, and what a blessing it is. My Lord, in this Western state of North Carolina, the borough of May, uh, watching all the way from Western Salem, I believe that is. Blessings to you. Thank God for you joining us uh, and sharing with us on today. Listen, friends, this is a very strategic time. I don't know uh, how you all are dealing with where you live locally in your city, out of state. But here in Michigan, we've had some 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 real bad weather. New Orleans has been hit. Florida been hit. And uh, this virus is, is at one point seemed like we was going to get rid of it. It's quieted down, but now it's, it's coming back with a vengeance, I know, here in this area. And so we'll continue to pray and follow protocol, and those that are uh, doing in-person worship are following all the rules and regulations to keep uh, themselves and their people safe. And we just got to do, make the adjustment to do what's necessary and what we need to do uh, to survive and to live. But ultimately, God is in control. I just believe that with all my heart. God is in control. And whatever God is doing in the midst of this, whatever he's doing, God has already uh, promised to do and to deliver if my people will humble themselves and pray. But uh, here is the deal. Here is the deal. Here is where the rubber meets the road, as the old preacher would say. We've got to look at ourselves. Let Every man, just please examine yourself. That's why we're doing this this thing on this subject matter on Saturday. Let's go back to God. Uh, the church has drifted so so far from God. Dear God wants His church back. We we just drifted. We I mean, just come on now. Let's tell the truth. The church don't even look like the church no more. It's just a a big old party. I mean, it's an entertainment station. I mean. You can go to church and find everything you want now. You can find good singing. You can find a fashion show. I mean, you can find it all. You know, you can find liars, you can find thieves. You can find all of everything that's in the world is in the church now. Uh, and, and folk are not glorifying God. Nothing sacred anymore. Uh, y'all, y'all, y'all keep up with me. And don't, don't, don't un- misunderstand me if you don't understand me. And, and I'm sure. Uh, there's some of you that might be chiming in tonight. You may have, in the past, attended musicals, church services, and visited places, and, and you see a lot of stuff that didn't used to be in the church. I mean, from all kind of dress, and again, uh, to just cut through the path and hit, hit the nail on the head. You know, uh, people have taken come as you are the context, and that, I mean, it's really embarrassing. It's a shame that some people expose themselves and what they think that means. Come as you are it means come as a thief, come as a sinner, come as a robber, an adulterer, all of that, your life. But we done took it to fashion, so we dressed down. We got all kind of Sundays we named, you know, T-shirt Sunday, Jersey Sunday, Blue Jeans Sunday. Uh, all, we, we've done everything we know to do in the church, and I, I wonder... If you can't, and then y'all dress up and go to the club. Y'all dress up and go to a banquet. You spend a hundred dollars on a ticket, and then you put on your your after fine and your your shirt, your tie, your tuxedo, or whatever. You get dressed up. Some of you ladies, you know, get your hair done, get your nails done, get your you know, get your pedicures, and you, you buy new jewelry and you buy a new dress um, because you don't want to wear the same dress from last year when you went to the banquet or the dinner, you know, and so you, you get dressed up. Come on, tell the truth about it. You pay to go and you pay the dress. And you you, you, know, you spend anywhere from 100 the ticket costs $100, then you spend more money on your hair, that's another $100, you know. And then you get your nails done, another 45 $50, whatever it is. And then you get a pedicure and then you get all dressed up, you get your makeup done, uh, make up artists so that you can be fine. You can be ready for to step out. And then you go pick up, go to your your, your favorite boutique or your favorite uh, store, Nordstrom's or Saks or wherever you wherever you like to shop at. And you get you you get you a nice dress outfit or after buying a formal whatever you do. 
you're spending money. Now you don't spend between three, four hundred, five hundred dollars for for a two hour uh, night out, and then y'all can't go to church for two hours and dress properly and give uh, your tithes or your offering because y'all think more of the world than you think of God. Think of His church. So uh, we've been talking about that. Have have the church influence the world? Or have the world influenced the church? You know, that's the question. I mean, are we influencing the world as we should, as we used to? Or is the world influencing the church from our music, from the beats, to the melody lines, from our decorum, from our dress, from our language, culturally, what we have done, is we bring everything into the church. We got slang sayings in the church that we use that don't need to be in the church. Uh, we use worldly topics to name uh, sermons and stuff now, trying to relate to this culture. Well, here's the word. Here's the word. Here's the word. Here's the word. You know, this is a new word at the church. I'm trying to be relevant. Everybody's trying to be relevant, <laughs> you know. And I understand, don't listen, I am not a striker. I, I am not against you trying to be relevant. But in your attempt to be relevant, are you preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or are you pleasing those who have itching ears? They want to hear fables and uh, they want to hear you going to make it. No, everybody ain't going to make it because they won't come out of sin. Let's just tell the truth. Tell people what they need to hear. I'm back to my favorite scripture uh, for, for this season. Galatians chapter 4, verse 16. Am I therefore your enemy because I tell you the truth? That's what Paul asked of the Galatians. I'm trying, I'm trying to lead you down the street and narrow where none but the righteous will see God. Be ye holy, as God said, for I am holy. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. The world has no business trying to be uh, the church, and the church has no business trying to make the world feel comfortable in the church. That, that's why even the government got it right. Separation of church and state. But y'all trying to merge stuff, and all and water just don't mix. The flesh is enmity against God. God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. How many times do we got to tell y'all that? He hates sin. He may not like what you're thinking and what you've done or what you're doing, but he loves you. He loves you so much that he'll send your pastor to get up on Sunday morning to talk about exactly what's going on in your life they don't live with you. They ain't never been to your house. But the Holy Ghost sends a word. And the man or woman of God receives that, that word and is instructed by the Holy Ghost, or by God, by the Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver to you the word that can save your life from an eternal hell. Listen, don't you fool around and die and don't know Jesus. It's better to have him and not need him than to need him and not have him. Now, y'all take that and, 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 and work with that now. Blessings to you, Billy Smith, for joining us tonight. Because let us, let us, be, let us be for real. This doggone pandemic, and, and, and I'm not being disturbed, but this thing here, we've lost people We've lost friends and loved ones, co-workers. And he was coming back around to claim more lives. Some people have died from pre-existing conditions. We know that. Some people, I mean, dying is a part of living. People have died every day from whatever they died from. It's just not this pandemic. But this pandemic has claimed close to a million lives nationwide. So it's serious. And for the church to have been shut down for a period of time, 
it gave us a fresh chance to look at ourselves and to grab hold of ourselves, correct what needs to be corrected, get rid of the junk, the mess, and get back to God and do what God has called us to do. You see, because you take, if you take some of these folk out of church, don't nobody know them. Just, just take them out of church, strip them of, you know, because the only place you can be a bishop is in the church, an apostle, a pastor, you know, evangelist. That's all because of the church. You know, not take them away from that. They just, they just who they are, whatever their surnames are, their first name. Take Bishop Barbara Andre Sonny Woods. I'm just Andre Sonny Wood. Let's just give up. And all these folks that have been so, 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 so positioned and made or, 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 or title driven. You know, God gave us a chance to look at us. I told somebody the other day, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just, you know, turn my certificate over and, and uh, take it off the wall from being bishop because there have been some who, who've been uh, elevated to the bishopric have made made the bishop look bad until I won't be associated with them. You know, some apostles, some pastors, until the world just lumps everybody together. And it makes, you know, you might be a good leader, a leader with integrity, accountability, and responsible, walking and living the best life you can in obedience to God. That might be you. But trust me, my brother, my sister, beloved of God, friends of mine, they <laughs> with every true prophet, there's that hundred or company of prophets. Well, just look, look at the story of Elijah. He was really out there by himself, and he had to face 450. So listen, all, all I'm saying is, 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 is we, 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 the church, the church who God calls his people, we have to take inventory of ourselves. You know, the church is, is not a playground. It's old preacher, old D, you say church is not a country club, and, and we should be careful on doing doing it the way we want to do it and so it's it's so important it's so important that we get back to the sacredness and i'm not just talking about brick and mortar but you are the church we are the temple of the living god your body belongs to god you know don't defile the temple with all this piercing tattooing Y'all hear what I'm saying? <clears throat> it's not just the world. The saints, the saints are tattooing their legs and their thighs and, and uh, arms and hands and face and, and all of that. Uh, Y'all need to look that up in scripture and what some of that stuff represented. You know, witches and warlocks and, and how people were identified by their tattoos. That's, a, that's what the gangs do. You know, they got tattoos that on their hands, their wrists, their fingers, you know, some on their neck, on their arms, their shoulders. The athletes are doing it. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. I mean, they, they all, they're all following this, this thing that they want to do, you know, for whatever reason. You know, it's a fad. And and sometimes when we follow fads, we find ourselves following things that we don't have any reference of to understand the meaning of why somebody did what they did. It just seemed, well, if everybody's doing it, then it must be something that I need to do because I want to fit in. I want to be a part of the conversation. I want people to compliment me. You know? And that that's what people are doing. They're following a fad. Don't you realize just like even in fashion, every year we got winter, spring, summer, and fall. And for every season of the year, 
uh, the fashion industry always introduce summer fashion, winter fashion, spring fashion, summer fashion. They do it every year. It changes. In the fall, they present in the winter. In the winter, they start uh, showing you the spring. And when spring comes, then they start advertising the summer fashion because they want you to be ready for when that season comes. Now, don't ask me to explain why some people come to church looking like whatever. I mean, they, they dress provocatively. They, they, and even the men, even the men, come on, let's, let's not jump on the women, you know, with the different color hair and with the earrings and the, all of that. I understand fashion. I'm a man. I like to dress good. I, I get my suits, my shirts, my ties. I, I like to coordinate. I, I like when I leave home, I want to be well dressed, well groomed. I understand that. But 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 at what point do we decide whether or not this is not the outfit for me? You know, we're all different sizes, different heights, different weights, or whatever. And everything don't look good on everybody. You just can't go. I'm not the kind of guy can just go into a store and just shop off a general rack. No, I, I got to, I got to find what suits my taste and what what suits my character and what looks good on me, what fits, you know, and uh, what makes sense for me to invest my money in when it comes to uh, my dress. And the same thing with women, you know. But but nowadays it's almost like anything goes, and that anything goes has subtly crept into the church. You're only there for a couple of hours. I'm, I'm reiterating this again. You know? So so we need to we need to do do this accordingly. You know, I, I had to jump off on that. Uh, and, and here's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, when you get a chance, one reference in your Bibles uh, to Philippians. Bless you, Caroline. I think you're all the way from New Zealand. Uh, jumping on sharing with us blessings right blessings from New Zealand uh, we appreciate you joining us uh, tonight and we pray that something we say uh, will, will glorify God and edify the saints Philippians chapter 2 verse number 3 I, 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 want, I want to read this you know I'm at that age now I got to have reading glasses sometime with me let me make sure. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 3. Well, let, 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 let me read from, from verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ and if any comfort of love, underline that, love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any in bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded having the same love, being on one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem another better than themselves. Look not on every man for his own thing, but every man also for the things of others. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. Listen, I, I, I just want I just want to just spend a couple of more minutes just talking about what he said, what Paul says to the Philippian church in verse number three. Let nothing be done through vain glory. Why? What is your motive for doing what you do for me? For God, for the church, or for somebody else? Are you, are, are you motivated with an underlying motive? Is there a string attached to you wanting to be my friend? I mean, what's your purpose? You want to get close to me and want to be, you know, my prayer partner or what? I need to know because what I've come to find out when you read Psalms 55, what David said, if it had been my uh, enemy, I could have guarded myself. But now it was a man, my own equal. Go to go to chapter, go to Psalms 
55 and read that. We took sweet counsel together and went to the house of God. And I say it all the time. I don't have a problem with people in the world when it comes to ministry. It's the people in the church. Another preacher, another bishop. This jealousy, this envy, this envy and, and, and all this all this covetousness and this backbiting, this 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 spirit of hypocrisy, all of this stuff. You know, I I, I, I get so appalled at it and it and I get bothered by it because it's unnecessary. Fulfill ye my joy. Be like minded. How can you be like minded with your brothers and sisters in in ministry if you're working against them? If you're trying to plot their downfall, having the same love, being on one accord, how you gonna be on one accord having the same love with somebody and you trying to plan their demise? You're part of some conspiracy. Huh? You're trying to overthrow, undermine. That, that, this, let nothing be done through vain, vain glory in the loneliness of God. Here is my point. I want to leave with you tonight because what you think of your brothers and sisters in Christ matters to God. Esteem others highly than yourself. How do you regard fellow yokemen? How do you regard fellow co-workers? At what level do you esteem them at? I mean, do you love them for being them? Or then you like them or love them for your own selfish purposes? And some people are like that, you know, they, they I'll be, I'm, I'm a convenience for you because you take advantage of my resources. You know, I'm there for you. I, I'm, I'm your support system. But when I need support, I can't pay. And do you know people, people are like that. As long as they can use you you are right with them. As long as they can get what they need from you and out of you, then they're all in. But the moment the well runs dry, or so the bank is closed, then you, you see another spirit in there. You know, mutiny on the bounty. There they go. You know, they don't like you. They hate you. You know, they, they're talking about you. You folk used to talk about you behind your back, but now, now they got Facebook, so they lash out and make comments and throw off and do all that crazy stuff. And, and even in church with, with leaders, you got members throwing spiritual tantrums like little babies when they can't have any way. All of this stuff, we need to take a look at. Esteem one another more highly or better than yourself. Can you do that? Can you look upon a brother or sister and get excited about what God is doing in their lives for them? And you still waiting for God to move in yours? I heard, I don't know who, Who's the author of this? It's just anonymous, as far as I know. If God is blessing your neighbor, he's in your neighborhood. So you could be next in line. I remember Pastor Shirley Caesar put out that song, You Next in Line for a Miracle. And and my brothers and sisters, we, we, we've got to understand that God's timing and God's seasons for our lives are not according to your time. He's, he's, he's the chronological timekeeper. God got everything already set. It's already prepared. He's just trying to prepare us for what he has prepared. That's the message we've got to get as we sojourn here one with another. So, whatever you do, 
Let, let me use myself, if you don't mind. Let, whatever you do, if you do something for Bishop Andre Woods, and, and uh, I tell you thank you and try to bless you as best I can and show my appreciation. You know, I wonder why when people say they're doing something for the purpose of love and that they're being a blessing to individuals to help them while they got to make it publicly known I did that. If it wasn't for me, Woods would be where he is. You know, we got people like that. I mean, don't you ever think that everybody's smiling in your face like you? You got, you got people that will lie to your face and say they're praying for you and walk right away and talk about you and never mention your name to God. It's unfortunate that that's the day we're living in. Men's hearts are waxing cold. And when I say cold, not only just against God, they don't care for each other. It's, it's, it's really sad. It's really sad. And that's why I, I try to seek out covenant relationships with my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. People who are like-minded, people who who are serving God for the right reasons and the right purposes and they understand what God requires of us as his servants. And so this thing about vain glory, most folk won't want to gain what they call personal influence so they can flaunt it. They, they desire uh, everybody to call their name, to be held in high regard. Apostle so-and-so, bishop so-and-so, prophet, prophet this, and pastor this, and, 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 and teacher and evangelist. Everybody want their name called. I don't know if it appeals to their egos or, or whatever it is. And I'm not talking about honoring people and giving them respect. We should do that. But when you got people who are just bent out of shape over a title or acronyms behind their name, I'm a PhD, I'm this, I'm that, I'm a doctor of the community. I'm, that's nice, that's beautiful, that's that. You, you matriculated and you earned you put in the time, the hours, and you've earned that degree or you've earned that status to be who you say you are. But still, the Bible say, let nothing be done in vain glory. So, if the reason you went to Bible school and to seminary was that you could learn hermeneutics and learn how to write a sermon, learn how to, to understand the revelation of God, to dig deep in the word of God and, and to be able to exegete and do all of this correctly according to uh, the word of God and make sure you are pulling out the true revelation of God based on the context of the scripture. You don't want to take things out of context, but you want to make sure your revelation knowledge is pure and sound. I understand that. But after you do all that and do it correctly, and people begin to applaud you, and you swells your head, you got to be very, very careful. You got to stay home. <laughs> if you're preaching for folk to applaud you, and to you preaching to try to get your name in what they call the top 10 preachers, top 100 preachers around the country, around the world. What, whatever that's all about, I don't know. But the best preacher ain't ever preached yet. And you still haven't preached your best sermon yet. God got people sitting waiting in the wings in an obscure place that he's going to uh, push out to the forefront. 
So don't 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 get beside yourself as if you're the standard for preaching and prophecy and being an apostle. Don't don't get beside yourself. That vain glory has gotten a lot of people in trouble. Because when you start taking God's glory and all of the vanity you have in who you are about what you've done about your ministry about your title then you, you're wondering you're treading on some dangerous territory that, that you really don't want to be out there like that exposed and you know I thank God for discernment because we all need it in this hour with this phenomenon of trying to be relevant and and these prophets and all this other stuff that's that's going on you know if there weren't false prophets the bible wouldn't warn us the bible warns us the Bible warns us that they can transform themselves into angels of light. We are warned. We are not ignorant to the devil's devices. Just don't you become one man or woman of God. Don't you become so tantalized and so tempted. Don't be manipulated. Don't be seduced in this materialism. Even on Facebook, don't, don't get so carried away with watching numbers. How many viewers did I have? I mean, you just preach, you just teach, just put the word of God out and, 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 and God will get it to who needs to hear it. God will get it to witnesses. God will encourage the body of Christ. Those that need, need to hear instruction and correction and reproof. Those that need to be encouraged and inspired. Those that need God's plan of salvation. Those that need to be saved from sin. They will hear the word of God. They need to know that God loves them. Even in their sin state. Even though they're lost, they can be found. By the love of God. So that, that that's... That's important because too many, I've seen it just recently, and it grieves my heart for us to, to, to do better. We got to do better. Let me just say it like that. We got to do better. And if you are a preacher, say you've been called of God, then be God's preacher and not a man pleaser. Don't, don't, don't sell out. You know, trying to be big, trying to be important. You know, the only one that's a star and important is the Lord Jesus Christ. You didn't, I didn't, nobody other than Christ died on Calvary's cross for the sins of the world. Huh? Remember that old hymn said, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin is that the prince of stain, but he washed them white as snow. The sin that has been paid, not by you or I, because we are the offenders. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not pass but have everlasting life. We learned that in Sunday school. Father gave his Son. The Son gave his life that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. It's just an old story. And we've got to keep telling the story. Preacher, pastor, man, woman of God, we've got to keep telling that story. Somebody haven't heard it. This generation, y'all call it millennials, we described this generation. Remember, it was Generation X. Huh? The Joshua generation. 
we we named these generations and yet we have not prepared properly these generations the bible said we should train up a child where she go and get old from that depart somewhere along the line some have abandoned the word of god in that they have not passed it on from generation to generation the teachings and the trainings have not been strategically passed on. Yes. Somebody want to ask a question? Yeah. What's your question in the comments? They're not trying to answer. And uh, bless you. I think that's Pastor Mark Gray and Ron Johnson. And I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Hamza Carson Time. You got a question? Go ahead and ask your question. I'll try to uh, ask your question. And and you know, I let me well, you know, I stopped doing disclaimers because you know I ain't saying nothing wrong. So I can't disclaim the word of God when I'm telling the truth. Folks just don't like the truth anymore. You know. So I'm not doing no disclaimer tonight. I'm just telling you what your words say. It's in the Bible. I didn't break in your house and put it in there. Open your Bible, you're going to find Philippians chapter 2. Matter of fact, you need to consume the whole chapter. It'll be a good spiritual diet for you uh, in days to come to remember what the word of God and the instruction of the Apostle Paul, you know, I wish I had kind of some, I'm kind of jealous in a way. Uh, I wish I had been around Paul so I could just personally interview him to see after his conversion how he went to take the gospel to the Gentiles and, and try to get them converted. And, uh, and then they turned on him, the very sad Egypt court and senators and the Pharisees and the scribes. They, they all turned on him in the Roman Empire because now the Christians that he used to have, he went to jail and sentenced them to death. He now become one of them. My God. <laughs> Listen, God is still doing that today. Some of you need a pastor's world experience. Maybe God needs to knock you off of something. Knock you off your own beast, your, 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 your high paying job. Knock you off your pride. Knock you off that beast of, 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 of selfishness. You know, you got the house now, you got the wife, you got the you got the husband, you, you got everything's going on, you got the career opportunity, you got the business, you got the money in the bank, you, you got things are going well. But somewhere along the line you forgot about God. You know, let me say this again, I say it all the time. I'm probably gonna do a whole lot of repeating until Jesus comes. So I'm gonna be like Noah preaching it's gonna rain. That's on certainly head. I'm going to be like John the Baptist, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. We say the same thing over and over and over and over and over again because trust me, somebody haven't heard it yet. So while y'all running around here trying to get new titles and become relevant, you just need to preach the word of God in pure form. Tell people the truth, trust me. When you tell people the truth, they appreciate it because the sad indictment on you is for them to find out the truth and you didn't tell them. I thought you was my friend. I thought you was my pastor. I thought you, I thought we were homies. I thought we had it like that. And you didn't tell me that what I'm doing is going to send me to hell. You didn't, you didn't warn me. I thought you was the bishop. I thought you was the apostle. See, y'all got to get rid of this buddy system. You know, that's why I'm glad, you know, in all my stuff over I'm glad I had people around me that pull my coat down and say, listen, I, I don't think, you know, we need to put a check on that, stop that, or don't say that, don't do that, you know. And sometimes I listen and sometimes I didn't. I'm just going to be, I'm being transparent. Sometimes I, now, when I look back on some stuff, listen, I wish I had a listen, because it would have saved me a lot of grief. And let me tell you, Pastor, that God telling us, God told me one time, I'll never forget. Blessed to you, my brother, Donnell DeBose. Thank you, man, for chiming in. 
I, I remember the late Dr. Betty Hall, great woman of God, anointed vessel, knowing me from a child. She came by the church and was out of the on one Sunday. And I was just praying for her, just working myself up. She came to me, she said, listen, don't you kill yourself, I'm going to tell you. Like God told Moses, stop praying for them. Ain't no need of you praying for them. I done made up my mind what I'm going to do with these, this uh, generation of disobedient people. Some people are just weeping. And when they're in God's hand, if God said no, you can't pray it off of them. He, ain't, he didn't kill them, but he's got to teach them. And hopefully they get the lesson. <clears throat> Excuse me. So some folks are just weeping. So pastor, save yourself. Don't be killing yourself staying up all night praying for some of these folks. They are at home snoring. You up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning for 4 or 5 hours at a time just seeking God's face on their behalf and they snoring. And probably 9 times out of 10 will go right back to doing what they was doing. They got them in trouble in the first place. So what God does, he steps in sometime and makes a decision. Since they take advantage of God's grace, which is unmerited favor, and they keep on trying God. Y'all don't, don't y'all need to stop doing that. Because even parents, you who are parents, you try to give your child a chance, and then they do it again. Then you have to pull out the switch. You have to pull out the belt. My mama used to give me and my brother's chance. Listen, when I come home tomorrow, you know, as soon as y'all get home, wash these dishes, take out their garbage, uh, clean up your do do your house chores. You ain't going nowhere to play no basketball, or nothing like that. The only thing saved me was my credit. I'm gonna tell y'all, don't tell nobody. The only thing saved me, don't tell mom, don't call it, tell Sherry and all y'all, don't tell car, tell my mom. The only thing saved me when I was in school was my grandfather told my mama. He needed to be at the church practicing his music. So I had to the church, so I went to church every day. So my brother was mad. <laughs> God, he would have to take up the slack sometime. But trust me, when I did get home on the weekend sometime, my mama made me make it up. If I didn't get to do the dishes, you know, from everybody, if I ain't wash your dish, don't put it in the sink, don't be rinsing off the uh uh. You old enough, iron your own clothes. Wash your own clothes. I done taught y'all how to do it. That, that's how we were raised. That's how we came up. You know? But I thank God for my grandfather because he saved me a lot of a lot of days. Praise his name. Saved me a lot of days. But listen, y'all, y'all, y'all hear my heart. Y'all know what I'm going with this. You know, we, we've got to do better in in our our deportment and our our attitude and our approach to the things of God. God is a holy God. He's sacred. You know, Rebecca said, you know, uh, 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 when we come into the presence of the Lord, you know, this is the time, you know, that we need to be silent. The earth needs to be silent. Everything about the world in God's presence ought to come to a standstill because he's a holy God. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Anything of your worldly cares, you know, be silent before God. I remember the time when we went in church, we were not allowed to laugh, talk, and clown in church. We went in church and we had to pray in preparation for the worship to start. But now y'all get in church, y'all talk about, you just got to church, and now you're talking about where you're going to eat. Church ain't started yet. Y'all ready to eat already. You pass it out showing pictures from the baby shower and the picnic. You know, now we got them on our phone, so, you know, we can just send the pictures to you or tell you, tell you to look on our Facebook page and look at all the pictures. We have hundreds of pictures of this and pictures of that. You know, all of we do we, we do what we want to do, I tell you that. We go where we want to go, I tell you that. And when we go, we stay as long as we want to stay. I tell you that. We spend our money where we want to spend it at. I tell you that too. You know, but then we want God to bless us. And we want him to do all that. Listen, my time is gone. I done went past my time. This thing about to go off on me. 
and I don't want to listen. I love y'all. Join me next week, Bishop Andre Woods, right here on this same station, this same time on open mic. Bless you. I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. That is my prayer. Love you. Hi, this is Irene, and you're listening to LIC MC Radio. <laughs> You're invited to tune in to Open Mic with Bishop Andre Sunny Woods. That's Thursdays at 10 p.m. Thursdays at 10 p.m. right here on LICAC Radio and Facebook. This is Irene, and you're listening to LIC MC Radio. You're invited to tune in to Open Mic with Bishop Andre Sunny Woods. That's Thursdays at 10 p.m. Thursdays at 10 p.m. right here on LIC MC Radio and Facebook Live. 